Hi, my name is Sarita. And my name is Rena. We are both past patients with Mexico Bariatric Center, and we are here to break the stigma of having weight loss surgery in Tijuana, Mexico. We will be covering all things bariatric to help you get the most out of this weight loss journey. On this episode, we are going to be talking about mistakes to avoid after surgery. Yes, because um, bariatric surgery is a great solution for long-term weight loss mm -hmm. and helping you maintain a healthy weight, but um, it is not the easy way out. No. And it does take a lot of discipline and um, Take, it's it's a tool. It's not magic. It's yeah. not you're not going to lose weight overnight. Um, it it is a great solution, as Rena said, for maintaining a healthy weight. I am five years seven months post op, yes. and I've been maintaining for four years, oh, almost four and a half years actually. Yeah, so you're doing a good job at it too. Thank you. Yeah. So it, it is it is an effective tool for um, treating things like obesity and mm -hmm. and, um, and morbid obesity, right. um, but you do have to follow those guidelines um, and avoid some risky mistakes. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the most common mistakes that we see patients make, and um, go from there. Okay. <clears throat> so the first mistake that most patients possibly make would be not drinking enough water. Right. The body needs water to aid in the healing process, to aid in the healing process after surgery. Yeah. Um, getting enough water in also helps you feel more energized because if you don't get enough in, you get dehydrated, you start to feel weak and dizzy and nauseous. You might even, you know, faint. I fainted once. Ooh. Yeah. I can't imagine. This is very scary. I was dehydrated one time, and that was post-op. Um, I've had I've had like dehydration headaches, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know that I've I've never been like dehydrated mm -hmm. um, enough to faint. I, that would scare me. It was also very hot, and yeah. you know I probably should have had more water that day or more fluids, and I yeah. didn't, and it was pretty scary. Yeah. But, so one thing that keeps me motivated to drink water is that you actually um, lose more weight drinking more water. So right. a lot of people don't know this, but when you lose weight, it has to go somewhere, right? Where does weight go? How does it leave the body? Does it just, it doesn't evaporate, right? So you actually lose weight by, uh, through your urine. So yeah. fat processes out of your body through your urine. So the more water that you drink, the um, more, not necessarily the more weight that you lose, but it also increases weight loss just from drinking water. So it helps keeps me motivated. It's like, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight. I gotta drink water, I gotta flush it out. Right. So, um, yes, keep up your hydration <clears throat> so you can keep up your weight loss. Mm -hmm. Keep it up, keep right. it going. Um, and then water also increase, I mean, water also helps you avoid, um, some pretty serious, like detrimental health issues such as dehydration. Right. Dehydration is not fun. Yes. Yeah. So you should choose a sugar-free hydration. Again. Sugar equals carbs equals fat. Yes. Again, sugar equals yes. carbs equals fat. Right. And and then one of the reasons we iterate reiterate this so much is that one of the number one um, causes of weight gain is liquid calories. So it's always um, important to try to stay away from sugary drinks. Right. I mean, I know that they say in there you can do like um, fruit juice and you know um, dilute it but really try and stay away from that because there is sugar and fruit juice there is and, and it is okay to do it like that first you know phase right. there but try not to wean yourself day. away from it yeah it's not an everyday thing it's just to mm -hmm. get you through that hump of the first phase right because yeah it doesn't hurt in that phase right but definitely <clears throat> wean away and you know a lot of people say well i just can't drink water water is so bland it's so plain or I hear people say water gives me heartburn. I'm not going to argue with them on that because before I had surgery, water did give me heartburn. So I get it. Um, but you can do things like adding lemon. Mm -hmm. My favorite is lime. I love adding lime to water. Um, I 
tend to drink just room temperature <laughs> bottle water. That's really my go-to. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with that or cold. And, and I add yeah. Mio drops to mine yeah. for flavor. Um, I've never had a problem with water. Right. So. so sometimes in the summer, you know what I really like to do? I like fresh and fruity. So in the summertime, I like to add some raspberries in my bottles of water. Yes, and raspberries are so soft and squishy that you can just drop them down in the bottle of water, put the lid on and yeah. shake it really aggressively. And then you got some super yummy raspberry flavored water. They're low in natural sugar. Yeah, and then there's cucumbers. Like you can do cucumbers. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of things you can Lots. Add. Lots of things to add without mm -hmm. going to crazy, um, crazy, crazy sugary crazy drinks. Sugar. Natural yeah. sugar is always, if you're going to have sugar, natural sugar, like from fruits, is always better. Right. So another mistake that patients make often is um, not taking post-op vitamins. Right. So they think, oh, I don't need vitamins, especially like gastric sleeve patients. They're like, I just had a sleeve, I don't need vitamins. That's not true. Um, for the at least the first year recommended two years, but at least the first year you need to take those vitamins. Um, if you don't know what vitamins to take, reach out to the nutritionist um, or Sarita or I, either one, we will get that information for you. Mm -hmm. um, but you do need to take vitamins. It's crucial to adhere to appropriate vitamin intake. Mm -hmm. um, you're eating such a low calorie diet at this time. Your body's not used to that. Your body's used to higher calorie diets prior to surgery. Um, so you do want to make sure you're taking appropriate supplements. Right. And you may not show consequences immediately, but you definitely will over time. Right. Your levels may seem normal, you know, your labs, but right. then they'll begin to drop, causing a series of health issues. Right. And listen, especially like <clears throat> bypass, if you had right. any mal malabsorption procedure, bypass, um, whether it be mini bypass, RMY, or the, or, the, or the DS, make sure you're on taking your vitamins. It's so important. And you, like Sarita said, your labs might be normal that first couple of months, and you think, oh, my labs are normal. I don't need these vitamins. But the thing is, with these supplements, you don't know that there's a problem until there's a problem. And then it's hard to fix the problem. Right. Until it's too late. Yeah, because you're going to be looking at things like heart loss. Heart, heart disease. Yeah, that's what I meant. Heart disease. Heart, <laughs> heart so, disease. So some things that could happen. Heart disease. Yes. Loss of bone density. Mm -hmm. Tooth decay. Right. Memory yes. loss. Oh, that's me. See. Difficulty focusing. Uh, yeah, that's me too. Fatigue. But I take my vitamins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Impaired vision. And let's talk about hair loss. Oh, hair loss. So I did not have any hair loss because, well, I know I can't say because, but I did not have any hair loss. I took my vitamins, stayed hydrated, got my protein in first, took my biotin. I don't know, maybe part of it was genetics, but I did not lose any hair. She's got great genes, y'all. Italian, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I did have some hair loss with the first surgery. It wasn't too bad, um, but I did have it. Um, my second surgery, I had less hair loss because mm -hmm. I was more proactive with vitamins. So I have a little regimen that I did. I did. Um, I was already taking vitamins because I had sleeve right. um, and I had weaned off a lot of them because I was three years post-op so I didn't really need a lot but um, one thing I did right before um, my second surgery my DS surgery is I started I started doing biotin mm -hmm. and vital proteins collagen and so I maintained that up up through you are supposed to stop taking vitamins two weeks before right. Um, but I still kept taking the collagen mm -hmm. all the way through mm -hmm. and then maybe not like the week of surgery because right. um, I didn't take it with me to travel and I was gone like 10 days with my extended trip and then um, but I did start retaking that biotin I mean that collagen when I got back mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't have much hair loss but I was very proactive and I was also very uh, as soon as I could take vitamins again I also started taking like mm -hmm. zinc and vitamin mm -hmm. E right. and um, all the vitamins that help with hair. Right. So um, I didn't have much hair loss at all with the second surgery mm -hmm. and I just, I, I attribute that to being more proactive with the vitamins. Right. right. Yes. 
I did not know it was a thing <clears throat> until long after I had surgery. And but, so you started helping patients with it, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> I had no idea that would, could be a thing that could happen. Yeah, and hair loss is usually like the number one thing that people ask, am I going to lose my hair? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a it's a pretty big deal. And the answer, it's a million dollar question though, because yeah. you cannot guarantee you will not lose hair. But vitamins help. <clears throat> Whether you you do or you don't, vitamins are going to be your mm -hmm. thing there. So preventative. another mistake that patients may make is not following the pre upper post op guidelines. It is yes. very very important to follow the guidelines. And you know it's just as important right. to follow pre op as it is post op right. for your long term success. Right. Right. Yes. This surgery is a, a tool to eat less it is not mm -hmm. magic it is hard work sometimes it is it gives you time to create healthy habits and the pre-op also um, gives you the tools so it becomes natural it becomes a right. habit right and by restricting your stomach to a smaller size um you're you're only eating a you know a small amount of food, so um, so you have that time to develop those habits. Yeah, very important to follow the pre op diet. It's helping prepare your body for surgery, right. shrinking your liver, which we talked about on the previous podcast. Um, it's important to follow this um, to avoid the risk of complications during surgery or cancellation or cancellation because you could get to TJ and get your surgery canceled mm -hmm. and. And we, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, your cousin's mother's brother's sister, that girl on Facebook, <laughs> might have said that she ate a hamburger the day before surgery mm -hmm. when she was supposed to be on clear liquids and she still had surgery. Well, she, she got, got lucky. She got lucky. Um, because that is not always the case. We see canceled patients mm -hmm. um, regularly who ate food and they got put to sleep and then there was food in their stomach and they got canceled and they right. had to pay for their flights. They had to pay for their labs. They had to pay for the hotel. They had to pay for the driver services right. and they had to pay for the attempt to do surgery. So they just right. lost all that the anesthesia, money. the actual yeah. surgeon, the surgeons, yeah. fees, the everything. It's so mm -hmm. you might as well have just paid for surgery. Right, and they will know if you did not follow the pre-op guidelines. They will know. They will know. They literally see inside your stomach. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> literally. And then the post-op diet. Right. It is super imperative to make healthy food choices um, during post-op diet uh, mm -hmm. for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. um, right. Again, you're learning. You're learning there. The things that you eat are what's going to make or slow. You're going to lose weight. Okay? Like... Right. You may um, be on the lower BMI range, mm -hmm. um, which means you don't have a lot of weight to lose. And you will lose slower. And so you're gonna lose slower. Mm -hmm. If you're choosing food choices, even if they're soft foods, so they fit in the phase, mm -hmm. but it's not a healthy choice, right. um, you're gonna, you're adding more calories, you're just gonna slow your, your results. And then mm -hmm. um, it's just an important time to learn. It's a learning right. curve mm -hmm. there. And, and that is why you go through four phases. You mm -hmm. have goals in each phase. In phase one, your goal is to stay hydrated. In phase two, liquids. your goal is to get in your protein. Thicker liquids. Right, thick yes. liquids. Three, go, goal, your goals in phase three are to start weighing your food. Right. And your goal is soft solid. Right, soft yes. solid. And your goal in and you're supposed to be following all the previous goals as you move right. into your phases. And goals in phase four is to follow all the other goals from the other phases and transition to solid food. It's very important to try one new food at a time yes. to see if you are able to tolerate it. Right. And whatever you do do not skip phases. Like, don't go from clear liquids to soft foods. Like, you can't do that. You have to go through that thick liquid <clears throat> phase. Right. Um, and again, so and so's mother's brother's cousin, sister girl on Facebook might have said, "Hey, on day five, I was eating eggs." Right. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because that person probably also reported a complication that was mm -hmm. probably their fault. Right. And you yes. do not want to rupture anything. No. Um, we've seen it happen. It's it's all there for mm -hmm. a reason. Right. Um, not only are you learning to 
um, make healthy choices through this, but you you are trying to heal the inside of your body. Right. right. And it's just detrimental <clears throat> to to do that. So just don't don't skip your phases. Mm -hmm. Don't don't skip ahead. Don't no. get in a rush. Just go slow. Yes, yeah, so you can. If you if you don't follow the guidelines, you're gonna you know you could potentially mm -hmm. um, have stomach and gastrointestinal right. intestinal problems. Right. Um, or some other major complications. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen everything. Yes. And I think we already mentioned that that post-op diet is there and it helps you, if you follow it, it helps you lose weight at, um, at a good rate. Right. And you are going to have stalls while your body catches up and, yes. and adjusts. And we get this question all the time about the three-week stall. Yes, it's real sometimes. And just do what you're doing. Trust the process. You're not done losing weight. You're not done losing three weeks. Three weeks. Promise. Trust, trust us. Promise. You're going to lose more weight. Right. Yes. And just just trust the process. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing what you're doing. Right. People say all the time, what can I do to break the stall? Well, mm -hmm. you don't really have to do anything. It I mean, sometimes happen. later on there's mm -hmm. things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, but and we'll go over that in a whole another episode. Right. Um, but... Uh, another thing too is always weigh your food. Don't don't mm -hmm. skip that. That's a mistake people make, especially long term. Right. Um, they think I know what you know. You don't want to you don't want to consume more than eight ounces at a time long term. Right. Six to eight. Um, but if you're starting out with like three to four ounces of meat and then like the two three to four ounces of vegetables, right. you know, next thing you know, you're like your eyeballs have grown. And it does it over time. So as your eyeballs grow and you eat more, then you're stretching your stomach more. Right. And the next thing you know, more so than stretching your stomach too, you're numbing your, your receptor, your pressure receptors. Yes. And you'll and so never you, get that back. You can't get that feeling back. So mm -hmm. people say, well, I'm, my stomach is stretched, so I can't, I don't, I don't get full like I used to. It's probably more so that you've numbed your pressure receptors than you have actually stretched out your stomach right. too much. You're just not feeling that restriction yes. because of the receptors. Right. So right. weigh your food. Weighing right. your food will prevent you from numbing those right. pressure receptors. And, and if you eat protein first, it's going to keep you full. Yes. And you're not going to need to eat every couple hours. Which goes into um, our next mistake. Snacking. Yes. Snacking too much. So snacking too much. Um is a <laughs> is a habit that a lot of people pick up um it is and you're not weighing snacks um you're just grabbing them and eating just, them yes <laughs> walking by the counter and grabbing some cheetos i did that recently mm -hmm. and um so i noticed that i think over the course of about two days i ate a whole bag of cheetos like three or four at a time every right. hour so <laughs> Don't and, do that. And they go down very easy. They They're do. They're considered slider foods. They, they slide are. right down. And yes. they taste good and they they don't make you full. Yes. And everybody says they eat popcorn. And there's nothing wrong with eating popcorn in small doses. Right. Um, but it is a slider food, so be careful with it. Mm -hmm. The thing about snacking is that you're just giving yourself extra calories that you don't right. need. And, you know, right after you have surgery, you know, for the first one to two years, Mm -hmm. roughly this is the time that you're going to be losing weight you yes know, you're, this is when you're going to be losing the bulk of your weight so yep you know avoid the snacks and then once you reach your once you get past that honeymoon mm -hmm. phase and you're um snacking well you're not you're gonna have a hard time maintaining if you're throwing mm -hmm. extra calories in for no right. reason now um you'll hear me tell people you'll hear me say all the time that my daily um meals look like meal three hours later, it's like a light snack, mm -hmm. three hours later, a meal. And you know that a planned meal is not a snack necessarily. No. It's like a planned snack is not a snack. It's right. a planned. It's part of your plan. Yes. So, um, but walking by a counter and grabbing Cheetos, that is, that is not, a that is plan. called grazing actually. Yes. That is not a plan and, <laughs> and don't do that. So, right. um, what are some good ways to read it to avoid, um, not snacking? So keep everything out of plain sight. Yeah, like don't leave the um, Cheetos on the counter if you right. have to keep stopping to eat them. Plan your meals, plan your snacks. Have yes. them in a place where you have access to them 
don't leave anything on the counters. I know some of us have children and husbands and things like that and they may be different, but put those snacks away, have yours accessible to you yeah. and you can stick to your plan. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so that way you're not adding the hundreds of calories right. for no reason yeah, to your body. You will definitely start gaining. Yep. You will. Or you'll you will, you will slow your weight loss. Yes. Definitely. In the early phases. Right. Um and now uh so Sarita, let's talk about another mistake um that that we see mm -hmm. with um after bariatric surgery that is mm -hmm. alcohol. Drinking alcohol does yes. not provide any nutritional value. No, it doesn't. It is loaded with calories and sugar. And what is sugar? Sugar equals, equals carbs, carbs, which equals, equals fat. Right, right. Yes. And so, you know, in alcohol, alcohol, every single gram of alcohol has seven calories mm -hmm. that the body has no use for. No nutritional it's value. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, drinking alcohol post uh, bypass is... Um, is even more important like not mm -hmm. drinking alcohol post bypass is even more important or avoiding it i should say because mm -hmm. um, with bypass you are the alcohol is getting into your bloodstream a lot faster right. at a more rapid rate and right. so um you're liable to be um very intoxicated very quickly right. um, which could be dangerous um especially if you think prior to surgery you could drink a lot um, and it didn't affect you <laughs> It will um, definitely affect you now. It will affect and, you differently yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's, it, the thing about alcohol is that you can drink alcohol in the future. Right. Um, it is, it is not uh, really advised. Like we just mentioned, alcohol is full of sugars and calories that you don't need. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're going to do it, you want to wait at least eight weeks. <clears throat> um, yes, eight weeks. And at least. It's a really sensitive subject, but there is also something known as transfer addiction. Yes. Very slippery slope with alcohol. Yes. Um, and we will address that in a future podcast. But yes. that is something to be aware of. Um, you know, it happens to patients. It does. We, we do see transfer addictions mm -hmm. um, post-bariatric, especially yes. without alcohol being probably the number one transfer addiction. Right. Absolutely. Next to shopping. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really. We'll get into all of that later. Yes. <laughs> just, yes. That's just me. Um, I like shopping. I, know, I like shopping. Yes. Do I have a transfer addiction or do I just like treating mm. myself? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll later. get into that later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're going to start drinking alcohol, you, you can consult with a nutritionist, um, mm -hmm. or your, or your surgeon doctor, yeah. or doctor, your PCP, somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, and then don't try it by yourself. No. Um, don't try it by yourself and don't try it in public. Don't do, don't Unless do you're with a trusted person. I mean, you know, you can, you can try with a trusted person. Mm -hmm. Um, but wait eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And then, so another mistake that we see, um, is carbonated beverages too soon right um if at all so carbonated beverages are a um very debatable topic amongst very in the bariatric world um you'll see surgeons say that they cause um, the stomach to stretch you'll see surgeons say that that's not true you'll see surgeons vary from every end of every spectrum right. on carbonated beverages and there's right. even some debate about it amongst our surgeons <laughs> right um but one thing that remains true amongst all of them is that you do want to avoid carbonated beverages for at least that first eight weeks right um especially the first year if possible mm -hmm. um drinking carbonated beverages can put you at different risk of different things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things in the early phases is bloating. Right. Carbonated, your, your tummy is tiny and if you're <clears throat> filling your tummy with air, um, you well, move. you just blew it up. Right. And so bloating um, would kind of, you wouldn't know if you were bloated from uh, gas pain right. or if you're bloated from a more serious complication right. um, so it's better to avoid <clears throat> um, especially in the that early part yeah I um, don't drink soda I, I hadn't drank soda in probably 15 years yeah 
So that's, I'm not a soda drinker, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, there are some carbonated be beverages that I mm -hmm. like. Yeah. Some um. Well, some I, zero I, sugar yeah, I can't have stuff. soda for a different reason. Yeah. I, I had an issue with bladder spasms, and so yeah. I quit soda completely, and I don't want to ever go through that again. So. But yeah, and things like even if it's not soda. Um, so soda specifically, again, is a lot of sugar. Right. And sugar equals carbs equals, equals fat. fat. Um, and then sodas and other, even if they're non-sugar, like zero sugar mm -hmm. style energy drinks, right. um, they have caffeine. And right. so caffeine leads to dehydration. Right. Um, and, and consuming things with extra calories, again, it can cause lack of weight loss. Right. And you don't want to drink your calories and... You know, you don't want to get back into that cycle of drinking soda every day because right. sugar equals carbs equals fat. Yeah. And again, you will not lose weight. You may gain weight. So, yeah, I suggest, you know, trying to stay away from it altogether. Yeah. Water, water is good for you. Water is your best friend. Right. Water is your best friend. It really is. And how did you choose soda when... You can choose water, and water promotes the hydration you need to lose more right. weight. And your whole goal in this is losing weight. And I think right. um, the most important thing about, you know, the carbonation, the acid can also cause gastric erosion over time. It can. A lot of carbonated mm -hmm. drinks have right. the the acid acids in them that cause that right so that that's important to know it is and uh drinking a lot of with acid erosion in your stomach you know it can lead to things like indigestion which is no fun mm -hmm. um nobody wants that in their yeah. life right mm -hmm. so what would you say sarita is probably <laughs> your biggest mistake um in your journey um okay so i, I already know this this one transparency here so <laughs> I after five months of losing weight consistently I thought it was okay to eat popcorn every day oh and I gained back 12 pounds oh from popcorn from popcorn okay yes, uh, it was truly popcorn see and slider right food. slider food and I thought well it has protein <laughs> <No. laughs> it also so, has a lot of carbs yeah so after a seven month stall Oh. And gaining 12 pounds, I got serious about my journey and cut out the popcorn. Okay. <laughs> really got serious and lost another 50 pounds by strength training, yoga, eating right, meal planning. I mean, just got really serious. Yeah. And met my goal weight and have been maintaining ever since. So about awesome. four, four years or so. Four yeah, that's awesome. Years. Yeah. So, you know what I think my biggest mistake is? Hmm. Oh, I don't really know about the big... I think my biggest mistake is not drinking enough water. Like, water is my best friend, okay? But I get busy during the day, and I just forget. And next thing I know, like, I know that I need to drink one bottle of water between each meal. And if I don't do that, then it's hard to get in the at least the 64 ounces a day. And a lot of times I'll go from, like, breakfast to it'll be like almost dinner time and I've had like one bottle yeah. and I'm like, ew. So <laughs> I have like this big note on my desk that says drink water and I have mm -hmm. reminders set on my phone. Okay. But if I'm busy, I just, I forget. So that's probably my biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. um, it's just at this point, not making time for more water. But I think my first mistake, which is, um, was eating entirely too much uh, ranch seasoning with canned chicken and an avocado salad <laughs> that I didn't, I don't know what I was thinking. That was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a big mistake. So I, I told that story in our, in our mm -hmm. post-op mm -hmm. thing, but just to reiterate, I, I thought that for my first soft solid food, I would do a canned chicken avocado ranch thing and I had bland food up to that point. So Hey, I thought I'll add the extra ranch seasoning, and yeah, that was gross. That, was, that made me sick. It's the only time I got sick. Um, um, yeah, so I did make the yeah. mistake of um, trying caffeine too early, coffee, oh. and proceeded to have a dumping syndrome. 
my oh, one yeah. and only time with your with your with my coffee creamer creamer but, yes. all that sugary right liquid yeah so that was my other mistake only uh, happened once do you have any other mistakes you, can you think of any other mistakes mm, i can't really think of anything i really really follow the guidelines still yeah and because i really want to be successful and i want to I want everyone to be successful. Yes, That's what we too. want. We, we want everyone to be successful. And um, I want to, I want to be there to help others mm -hmm. get through their journey and be successful. Yeah. I think too, um, a, another mistake, um, I don't know if I would call it a mistake or a learning lesson. Maybe it's both, but um, I have gotten off track and, and once I ate like sugar, um, it was really hard to get off of eating sugar. So like oh. even prior to surgery, I was not a big sugar sweet mm -hmm. eater. Um, but then knowing that I like trying so hard not to, so like say I go to an event right. and have a dessert, cake, a cake, right. and then like right now I'm craving something sweet because mm -hmm. I decided to buy a candy bar the other day, right? So it was a special candy bar. And so now it's just been me fighting that right. sugar and sugar equals carbs. So what happens is if you eat sugar, then you crave carbs. Right. So it's um, almost like you have to detox you every do. time you, do. you eat something like that and it takes a couple days to get out of your system and it feels it's like so starting hard. over again. Yeah, and if you do it too much before you catch it, then you just a continuous cycle. It is, and when you try to break it, what happens is that you get headaches, you get withdrawal. Yeah, you really you, get sugar and carb withdrawal. Like you're detoxing from drugs. Like there's studies that say that you detox from sugar and carbs mm -hmm. like um, the way people and, do you know, from like cocaine. A lot of patients, um, tell us that, you know, they have, oh, I have such a bad headache, I have a migraine, and they're detoxing off carbs. Yeah. They're detoxing off caffeine yes. in the first few days on pre-op, and, you know, you just have to go through it. It's a couple days, and then everything will be fine. Yeah. But it's hard. Yeah, I always tell people, too, if they're booking their surgeries further out, and they have a couple of months before mm -hmm. they have to start their pre-op, I tell them to wean themselves off yes. carbs and sugar. Like, don't try to cold turkey that. No. That hard. is a mistake. I had to, you know, cut the caffeine because I booked so quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was hard. Yeah, it's a detox. Yeah, it's a detox. Yeah. That's not really a mistake. That was a not knowing. But right. I feel like if somebody advises you and then you don't take that advice, then that, was, that turns it into a mistake, mistake right? Yeah. Yep. So... Any other mistakes you got it you yeah. had in mind? Like mm -hmm. any others like you've seen from somebody or um, um, eating no. steak three days post op? Oh well, yes, we, we have that happen all the time. Yeah, um, or apples or potato chips right. or let's yeah. let's don't do any of those things. Follow the guidelines. Follow the, guidelines. the best advice I can give: follow the guidelines. Yes, and thanks for tuning in. Thank you. We'll Bye. see you next time. Next time. If you have any questions or want to share your bariatric weight loss journey, you can call or text us at 480-999-4826 or send an email to podcast at mexicobariatriccenter.com. You can also follow Mexico Bariatric Center on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Keep in mind, these are the opinions of the host. The views represented do not reflect or define the values of Mexico Bariatric Center. This podcast is sponsored by Emerge Bariatrics and Mexico Bariatric Center. Please visit MexicoBariatricCenter.com for more information.